Hey out there, legal warriors. The big question, the question I always get, should you do field sobriety tests if you're pulled over for a DUI in Washington State? If you're interested in what I usually tell people in that area of the law, stay tuned. This is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Fryer. I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm has been defending people charged with crimes all throughout Washington State for more than 20 years, and I'm putting out these videos to help educate the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get to see it. More people will get the help they need. And I'm just going to jump right into it. Should you do field sobriety tests if you're pulled over for a DUI in Washington State? Now, really, what's the question sound like? Hey, Lance, I, I got pulled over and I did field sobriety tests. Should I have done those? Was that a mistake or, or was it not? And so oftentimes that's the question I'm getting. And why I cannot and am not giving legal advice here on YouTube, this is educational. I am uh, totally able to say what I tell most of those people ask me that question. If I get asked the question, should I have done field sobriety tests? Almost always the answer is absolutely not. No, no. Uh, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Person Stop for DUI, um, you should not do field sobriety tests. Well, why not, Lance? I mean, uh, aren't they going to think I'm guilty if I don't do the field sobriety tests? Um, they already think you're guilty, right? If you're pulled over and they're pulling you out of the car to do a field sobriety test, they already smell alcohol or marijuana. They've already got enough in their mind to arrest you. And almost certainly you are going to get arrested whether or not you do the field sobriety tests or not. And there's going to be plenty of commenters who are saying, hey, you don't know what you're talking about, Lance. And the trolls are going to be out from all different states talking about the consequences of re refusing a field sobriety test and how in some states, if you refuse, you might lose your license. But remember, I'm talking about when I answer someone's question in Washington State, when I'm a Washington State lawyer. And no, no, Mr. or Mrs. Driver, you should not do those field tests. So why not? Well, let's think about it. Um, why are they asking you to do field sobriety tests to begin with? Are they doing it to benefit you? Are they doing it so they can see if you're okay to drive? Uh, no, they're not seeing it if doing it so they can see if you're okay to drive. They're doing it to justify and have a better uh, basis to arrest you, to have more probable cause to arrest, right? The officers typically don't do things that are going to benefit someone they are believing has committed a crime in front of them driving under the influence, right? So um, why is it not a good idea to do these field sobriety tests in most cases is what I would tell a person. Why not? Because you just can't pass them, right? Um, they are subjective. The National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration made these tests a long time ago, validated, you know, decades ago, and they're the same tests all throughout the United States. And it, it's a bunch of uh, uh, um, sort of a uh, hocus pocus. It doesn't really make any sense if you think about it. Um, one of the tests they're going to have us do is a horizontal gaze nystagmus test. They're going to have us look at a pin. They're going to have me follow it with your eyes, Lance. Follow this pin or my finger with your eyes. And the officers are looking for things that you don't even know what they're looking for. They're looking for uh, whether or not your eyes track smoothly. They're looking for an involuntary jerking of the eyes. They're looking for whether or not there's a distinct and sustained shaking of the eye at maximum deviation. And uh, most officers don't even do it right, in my opinion. Um, you know, a good portion of my staff, including me, have been trained in, in this type of thing. And officers don't do the stimulus right. And they sort of see what they want to see. It's not like they record your eyes. And only a certain percentage of people is this even working. Some people have a, a nystagmus regardless if they're drinking. Some people don't have nystagmus if they're drinking. And um, it really is only validated for alcohol consumption. And the officers already um, can show usually alcohol consumption based upon their claim testimony, slurred speech, uh, you know, breath, uh, alcohol, stuff like that. Um, and so, you know, there's no reason to do that test. It's not going to help you. They're not going to find that there's nothing wrong with your eyes. They're going to find clues pretty much every time. Um, so, you know, uh, the next test they want us to do is a walk and turn test, right? And that's the worst test of them all. It's the most unfair test of the whole bunch. What is a walk and turn test? Well, they're going to want you to take, they're going to want you to take nine heel to toe steps down the line 
turn in a prescribed manner and return taking nine heel to toe steps. And I've got a video on my channel about field sobriety tests and literally how they're done. But, but in this case, um, they're looking for eight different clues. Uh, and if they only see two clues out of nine steps each way, then that's a, a fail. They, you know, it's, it's likely that you're a 0.10 or above because that's what they're validated at as opposed to 0.08. And um, why don't we want to do this? Well, let's talk about what the clues are, right? The clues are whether or not you start too soon. You, you, you take a step while you're trying to practice, trying to listen to the officer on the side of the road, if they're even instructing you correctly, which they, they don't do all the time. Um, if you start too soon, if you break from a starting position, your, leg, your, your legs are supposed to be one in front of the other. And if you sort of break from that starting position while listening to these instructions on the side of the road, while it's cold, while it's dark, while, while you're nervous, while you might be on the interstate and cars zooming by and you try to listen and you oh, take a wrong step. And now that's a clue. You're drunk. OK, um, they're going to score whether or not you step off the line. Right. And usually there is no line. They'll say, imagine a line. Well, how can you step off a line that's not there? Right. Um, they actually score you when you step off the line that the officer can't see and you can't see. Very rarely do they say, imagine a two inch line or a four inch line. Um, how can they score you if you step off a line that's not there? They're going to score you if you miss heel to toe by more than half an inch. Right. And, you know, you, you barely miss heel to toe. Um, due to who knows why. Maybe it's not, not drunkenness. Maybe it's because it's sloped or maybe because there's uh, detritus or gravel or stuff in the road, or maybe it's because it's too dark or because you have a bad leg or a bad back or maybe a sneeze. Who knows why? But they're going to score you if you do that. They're going to score if you use your arms for balance more than uh, six inches from their side. Now, one little quick thing they're going to tell you is keep your arms at your side, right? But, um, you know, and, and, and it's pretty uh, hard to tell if someone uses their arm. Is this six inches? Is this? Is this? Right. Um, what is uh, six inches? Right. They're going to score you if you do uh, an improper turn. They're going to say, hey, turn by taking a series of small steps while keeping one foot of your front foot, foot planted. Um, sometimes they demonstrate it. Sometimes they don't. And again, you only get to hear it once and they don't tell you what they're looking for. Right. They're also going to score if you take the wrong number of steps um, or if you uh, stop walking uh, while the test is going on. So many people stop because they're trying to do their best. They're trying to follow the instructions. They might say, now, uh, what did you say about the turn again? You can't do that, right? If you comply really early and, and the officer gives you all these instructions, rapid fire, and then you say you understand just because you're trying to comply, now you're dead, right? Because um, you don't understand. You don't know. Uh, you know, how strictly this is being scored. It's not fair. You can't pass it. And therefore, if someone were to ask me, should you do this test? Absolutely not. Do not do the walk and turn. That's what I would tell someone. And from an educational point of view, if I were asked to do a walk and turn test, I would not do it. What's the final test they usually have us do as far as the physical test? It's the one leg stand test. And that, and that test, they're going to say, hey, stand, stand with your feet together, arms at your sides. Uh, don't start the test until I tell you to. When I tell you to, left one foot off the ground, approximately six inches, foot pointed out. Count out loud, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, until I tell you to stop. Now, I want you to look at your elevated foot. I want you to keep your arms at your sides again. Count each step, count each second out loud, 1,001, 1,002. If you happen to put your foot down, go ahead and pick your foot back up and continue counting where you left off. You understand? So then they're going to have you do that test. And that test, they're looking for four clues, right? They're looking for whether or not you hop, right? Right, You're on one foot, you know, so do you hop to stay on one foot? A lot of people would. They don't tell you not to hop, but they're going to score you if you hop. Does that seem fair, right? They're going to score you if you sway, right? Swaying is not defined. It's not defined. They can, whatever they say a sway is, a sway is. They're going to score you if you use your arms for balance. Again, six inches. Good luck estimating that. And finally, they're going to score you if you put your foot down, right? So uh, one hop is probably a sway and probably using your arms for balance also. So again, one single uh, misfire on your part uh, means you're drunk to the police. And so why would you put yourself in a situation where you have to be a ballerina um, and probably still a ballerina would fail because these are subjective, um, to have any chance to make the officer happy when they're just going to arrest you anyway. It just makes it harder on your defense attorney. 
you refuse the field sobriety test, they're not going to uh, suspend your license. They can say you refused because you uh, thought you were you were guilty, but they're going to say that anyway, right? Um, if you refuse the field sobriety test and you refuse the handheld test, the portable breath test, um, it makes it a lot harder for the officer to justify that arrest decision, right? Um, they're going to put pressure on you. They're going to say things like, come on, you know, uh, if if you don't do these, I'm going to decide on the information I have, which makes you think wrongfully that if you do well on it, they're going to let you go. OK, the only time I can imagine doing any of the, the the tests would be the handheld test. If you've had nothing to drink, you had nothing in your system uh, and the officer wants you to do field sobriety tests. If they asked me and I was in that situation um, because I don't consume any alcohol and drive, it's just not worth it. But if I got to ask that because I'm out driving, I mean, I was out driving last night coming back from a movie. It was, you know, close to bar time. And of course, I had no alcohol, but I do think it's defense attorney. What would I do? I would refuse field sobriety tests. They just give me the portable breath test and it shows zeros when I'd be on my way, hopefully. Uh, but if they ask me to do field sobriety tests, dead sober and an expert, uh, you know, in these, I couldn't do it because you can't do it because it's subjective and it's not fair and you're nervous and you're cold, and maybe you have consumed some alcohol, right? So, um, so yes, uh, yes, I'm advising people that ask me, should I have done the test when they ask after the fact? I say, absolutely not. Um, you can make your own decision. Hopefully, you're never in this. Again, this is not legal advice. You're going to do what's right for you. Um, but I've never seen any good come out of doing field sobriety tests. Once or twice in 30 years, you see an officer mark something that makes someone look pretty good. Um, I've had a situation where I requested 100 officers' reports of their most recent 100 DUI arrests and the similarities and how they scored everything. No way it could have been true. No way it could have been accurate. Uh, it was someone just using these tests uh, to justify arrest because, of course, usually they're right. Usually when an officer pulls someone over and uh, smells alcohol and stuff, we shouldn't be driving. Usually they're right. Okay. But if someone asks, should I do the field sobriety test and build their case against you? Um, of course not. So um, uh, you make your own decision. I'm not advising you what to do, but that is what I tell people after the fact almost every time. So I hope that answers the question uh, that you might have about, you know, whether or not for most people, if they ask, should they do field sobriety tests? Hopefully that's useful. If so, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. And more importantly, if you get a DUI situation, any criminal situation in Washington State, feel free to give my office a call. Doing this more than 20 years. We get on board, we'll listen to what happened, we'll identify a way forward, and we will be there for you. Thank you.